John, we were, we've been having this amazing conversation about the potential for swift fuel and all that is well and good and so forth until you get up against that big old devil, certification. Yeah. The, the fact that sooner or later, somehow, some fed somewhere has got to say, got to bless it and say, go forth, fuel the world. Exactly, Jim. And you know, that's, that's something that I really take to heart. I'm a SWIFT's representative for the ASTM International uh, Alternative Fuels uh, Committee. And so we're really working hard to get it not only uh, certified legally through FAA, but as well as through uh, some sort of standard like ASTM. We really feel that industry consensus is the best approach rather than just having uh, the FAA certify one-off fuels. It really needs to be a global solution. And so then you look at, well, how are we going to get all of our known equipment certified on a new fuel, which is actually counterintuitive to what we've done in the past. We've certified new equipment on a known fuel, and the known fuel uh, since 72 has been 100 low lead. And so we're coming to this situation where we either STC every engineer frame combination, we put on an amended type certificate uh, through the OEMs, put a service bulletin out, or we could do something just as clever and work with the FAA hand in hand and say, look, folks, FAA, OEMs, come together, let's address this head on. We know this is a, a uh, not a typical thing that, that one will be doing. This is a process that is going to occur once to recertify the entire fleet. And by fleet, I mean every piston engine aircraft still using 100 low lead. And so the FAA has been very receptive. And I'm not talking ACOs, I'm talking the engine and propeller directorate and the uh, light aircraft uh, director. The true propeller heads. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, and we're designing in conjunction with them and the OEMs a, a big picture blanket certification plan. And a blanket is a bad word when it comes to FAA. Um, but you know they're really they're really taking this issue head on, and and they are uh, analyzing our fuel off of technical merit, and say you know this is something that truly matches the performance of 100 low lead, so why can't we certify it in the fleet to be used? Integra Release 9 sets a new standard with the easiest to use pilot interface in all of general aviation. Access to any of Release 9's powerful capabilities is simple as pressing the desired bi-directional page key. Pressing the same key in a desired direction navigates to the clearly labeled tabs with no more guessing as to what a given pilot input would do. Avidine's Integra Release 9 is the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology and the easiest to use page and tab user interface is just one of the many benefits designed to make your flying easier and safer. We're working uh, right now with them uh, to develop this timeline and it's not going to be five years off in the future. Uh, we all know that it has to happen and, and happen soon. We don't want to just jump to conclusions before the data is in place. Uh, so they're being proceeding uh, very cautiously, uh, but with more speed than usual. And so we thank them for that. And the administrator has put out that this is one of the top issues facing the FAA today, that they need to address this head on uh, Oshkosh this year. And so with that in mind, we're moving, you know, the, the long way of saying we're moving to create a blanket certification so that aircraft owners, and aircraft like this Howard behind me and Navajos and Cessna 150s and 72s and Pipers, they won't need to individually recertify their aircraft. That's an easy way of saying they're going to kind of group like aircraft, small, light compression, small compression engines, medium compression, you know, medium area engines, and then your very high compression, high demand engines that truly need 100 octane for detonation among other reasons. And they're going to certify uh, a representative sample of each one of those categories or run it through a process and then blanket certify the aircraft that, that fit within that operating envelope. So, The things that worry me, uh, you know, when we started this process, John and I, five years ago, we, we started this fuel process. It was first getting the word out there and getting the data out there that people believe. You know, so we started using third-party folks like our partners at Cessna and Lycoming and Embry-Riddle to actually generate the data for us in the FAA Tech Center. Then once the data got out there, then there were these one-off people that thought they had the solution. Our greatest fear uh, along the way was that people would follow one cult or the other. We, we got to stop loving the problem and, and love the solution and because we all love to fly. We just need to find that solution and move forward. We think we have the solution. Freedom through performance. At Cirrus, performance is not simply the measurement of a single design parameter. Rather, it's a total package. It's optimum balance of speed, efficiency, comfort, safety, ease of flight, and quality. We call it Cirrus Flying 2.0. Aren't you ready to feel the freedom?
the solutions out in the, the media world, uh, you don't hear much about them. Right. And you keep hearing about Swift and data and data and data. Maybe I'm partial to that, but I, I do a, a daily sweep. And the options are literally falling off the table or out of the air like flies. And so, you know, we, we support all alternative fuels that help general aviation. That's, that's our overall mission. We have facing us the certification process. I'm very certain with the meetings that we've had with the FAA that, that they're serious about getting this done in, in, in a year's time frame or so. Uh, to get this timeline out so we can begin to follow it. I think a, a pitfall is the advocacy groups not advocating for general aviation. You know, I've been a member of most all advocacy groups for a while now. Yeah, they, and just, they just kind of discovered this problem like it started up yesterday. Exactly. And you know, they're not really advocating for anything. No. They're advocating, uh, one, one group I heard, and I'm going to avoid names here, uh, advocating for a, an, a lower lead solution fuel. But it's really not taking us away from our initial problem. I don't want to get into the whole lead debate because it's like the global warming debate. You know, there's two camps and people feel very strongly about whether it is or isn't a problem. What we say is we, we have an option now to make that transition not away from lead but away from petroleum. Make general aviation self-sustaining. And uh, I, I think that if the advocacy groups, and, and we're seeing this come around, the advocacy groups are talking to us and saying, okay, how can we really support with our membership a solution like this. And I think the more people that we bring together, more OEMs that are serious about working with us, we're happy to give them fuel and happy to let them do the data generation rather than let us spoon feed them the data. So uh, right now the, the pitfalls are, are um, you know, advocating for the wrong things or advocating for things that will take years and years and years that have no production process and, uh, you know, getting the word out there. So we're, we're, we're trying on both fronts. God willing, and the crick don't rise, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, you know, we're, we're in it for the long haul. We're pilots first, not trained as a chemist or a chemical engineer. I'm de facto a fuels guy. Um, yeah, I, I love being that, and I love doing that. But, uh, you know, we're, we're pilots first. We want to keep flying. That's why we started doing what we're doing, for, for the love of aviation as a whole. John, thank you very much.